Hey guys, my name is Adi Osmani and welcome to another video tutorial. So jQuery 1.5 just came out and one of the neat new things um, it came with was something called jQuery.sub. So what is that? Well, in a nutshell, when you use jQuery.sub, it creates a brand new copy of jQuery and properties and methods can be modified on that without you affecting the original jQuery object. So why does that all matter? Um, well, you might want to be able to overwrite internal jQuery methods so things like append and remove. And if you're going to do that, it's best that you do it without destroying those original methods for everybody else. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, um, if, let's say, for example, if I wanted to modify the append method um, to do something every time something was added to the DOM. So, you know, if I had, you know, like an, an online web editor, for example, and I wanted to keep track of every single time something was being appended to the DOM. Now, let's say one of my users wanted to include lots of different jQuery plugins on that page. Um, they might not expect or want the append method to have been um, modified. And, you know, there might be performance hits that are involved in them using my modified version. And, you know, I, I might not want them to be using my version. There's, there might be some very custom stuff on mine that, you know, I don't want um, other things to be using. So jQuery.sub offers you an easy, relatively safe way to achieve that. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. Uh, jQuery.sub is also useful for things like some basic encapsulation and very basic namespacing and stuff like that. Um, so let's let's get straight to our demo. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to use jQuery.sub and uh, keep methods internal so they can't be used externally. And uh, I'll explain what that means soon. Uh, I'm also going to show you how to modify jQuery methods um, using your own code uh, in a subbed instance of jQuery. And I'm finally going to show you how to expose specific sub methods externally in case you want to do that. So uh, here is here's our setup. Um, demo should be above me somewhere. Um, I've got some basic HTML. I've got Stewie as a class. I've got a UL list with all of my links that are over here. And I've got some CSS over here, which you don't need to pay attention to. Um, OK, so let's get straight into the code. Um, here I've got an anonymous self-executing function. And I'm creating a brand new copy of jQuery um, using .sub, so var sub equals jQuery.sub. And what I'm then going to do is I'm going to define a custom method on fn in sub um, called I'm telling. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to switch out this um, Stewie image uh, into something else, something with a pointing saying I'm telling. Um, okay, so let's let's try that out. It's very simple, very basic. Let's try that out. So here, um, before I, I mention that, um, what you'll notice is that I'm using sub document dot ready sub my selector sub my selector rather than um, just accessing the regular uh, jQuery object. So what you'll see if I've got, so I'm testing with the regular jQuery object down here, but for all of my sub stuff, um, I may not want to be touching that um, global stuff. So we're just going to use this. Remember that there's a difference between that and that um, is really all you need to, to bear in mind, especially when it comes to selectors. Anyway, um, let's test this out. So um, I'm binding a click to my first link on the page, and I'm going to grab Stewie, and I'm going to just call I'm telling. So let's see that in action. Let's run. And what you'll see is that the image has switched out as expected. Um, let's do something down here in the global jQuery or the original jQuery. Um, now let me comment out that. That's for another demo. But here, uh, again, I'm going to here I'm going to attach it to the third link on the page where, I'm, where it says testing outside of sub. And again, we're going to call Stewie.I'm telling, but we're now going to access it um, outside of sub and see what happens there. So here we go. And what you see is that nothing happens. Um, the reason for that is that I'm telling isn't defined for the global jQuery. It's just defined up here for my sub version of jQuery. So I'm keeping this um, internal method um, safe from outside, and I can use it as much as I want inside, but you're not going to be able to access it externally. Let's take a look at something a little bit more complicated than that and see what we can do. So here, in this code example, uh, I'm going to modify delay. Uh, I could have chosen a few different functions, but delay is easy to use. So um, I'm going to modify the internal jQuery method delay um, to do something different. Um, I'm going to modify it so that it changes the h1 on this page to just mention how long um, it's delaying for in milliseconds. Now this is a perfect example of where I might want to do something um, using delay for, for my own code, 
but I may not want other code on the page, so plugins, etc., to be doing the same thing. So again, uh, here down here before I continue, um, we're using global jQuery fn delay apply to start arguments. Now let's try that out. And here we're binding to the second link on the page, and we're basically saying Stewie slide up delay for 900 milliseconds and then fade in. So let's run that demo. And as you can see, it's updated the H1 with the delay, and uh, that all works fine. But let's go down here again. Um, we know the Stewie I'm telling doesn't work, so we're going to comment that out. And now we're going to try Stewie.slideup.delay.fade in and see what happens there. Now this is the third link again. So yeah, um, slide up works fine, delay works fine, fade in works fine, but that's using the regular jQuery delay. It's not using my custom version. And uh, again, you know, perfect example of where I can let the rest of the code in the page um, use the regular jQuery delay, and I've got my own custom version um, that has a little modification to it for my own needs. So we've gone through um, internal stuff. We've gone through modifying internal jQuery methods um, safely. And uh, now we're going to take a look at something a little more complicated. Well, not complicated, but advanced. Okay, so here, sorry, not here, but down here, I am creating another sub jQuery. And here we're going to play with plugins. So we've called this var plugin equals jQuery.sub. So what am I doing here? I'm extending fn. Um, and with a new method called I'm sophisticated. And what I'm sophisticated is going to do is it's going to, it's going to change the image of Stewie to um, one of him being more sophisticated. Uh, okay, so um, what do we have to do before we can do, we can continue there? Uh, I'm going to add this plugin to the original jQuery. So jQuery.fn.substuff. Substuff can be anything. Um, if you if you use the plugin development, you'll know the step. Uh, you know, it can be my it can be Family Guy, it can be my plugin, it can be anything really. But what we're going to do is we're going to return plugin this. So we're going to return this, and uh, let's test that out. So fourth link on the page, um, Sui dot. But before we before we do this, actually, let me run for you another quick test. Let's try accessing I'm sophisticated on just that and see what happens. And nothing, nothing happens. Um, the reason for that is that I'm sophisticated um, isn't available. Uh, to the global jQuery, it's only available to the sub stuff. So um, rather than doing any of that, we're going to go back and we're going to do stewie.substuff.im sophisticated. And when we do that, we run this, what you'll see is that the image switches out. Um, so where is that useful? Um, I've basically just taken an internal method that I've defined and I've made it externally available. Um, in case I want people to be able to use that, in case I want you know other applications or plugins or whatever to be able to use it, it's now available. And what this gives you is a level of granular control. Um, I can say what I want to be only internally available. I can um, extend things to make them externally available if I want. And I can also modify internal jQuery methods um, whilst keeping them safely away from other people that might want to use those same methods on the page. So uh, those are just a few of the things that you can use jQuery.sub for. Um, it's really useful. Uh, again, I would reiterate that the most useful thing um, you can use it for, in my opinion, is modifying those internal methods and having your own copy of that. Um, it's great knowing that you know you can do that, and plugin authors or whatever can um, just keep using the regular method, uh, and they don't have to worry about um, you know you modifying methods that they're going to be using, and you don't have to worry about them using methods that you want to customize further. So uh, yeah, that's jQuery.sub in a nutshell. And uh, if you want to read some more, there's a really nice API page on jQuery.sub that's available. Um, it's got some additional advice that I you know, probably haven't mentioned in this video so far. But uh, if you take a look at the last paragraph, what it says is that if you're looking to use this for plugin development, um, you should first strongly consider using something like the jQuery UI widget factory. Um, and that manages both state and uh, sub and plug methods. Plug, sorry, plug in sub methods. Um, it's got some examples that you can take a look at. But yeah, we've got some additional demos on here that you can try out. Well, ex additional code examples you can look at. Uh, and yeah, that's that's really it for jQuery sub. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope this video has been useful. And uh, goodbye until next time.